in yes complex. The Nintendo 64 only has 296 games in its North American library, but what a library it is. At times amazing, sometimes pathetic, and often underappreciated, the Nintendo 64 is a quirky chapter in gaming history. Of course, the Nintendo 64 library is loaded with classic games like Zelda Ocarina of Time, Rogue Squadron, Super Mario 64, and GoldenEye. But some of my favorite games are more obscure. Games like Beetle Adventure Racing, the racer that rewards exploration with ingenious shortcuts and imaginatively thematic environments, and Gauntlet Legends, the fantasy world multiplayer hack and slash which pits you against countless hordes of orcs and goblins, and Rocket, Robot on Wheels, the circusy physics manipulating platform adventure. But for every gem on the Nintendo 64, there are a dozen pieces of garbage. Games like the notorious Superman 64, where you must steer a clunky block of red and blue polygons into a series of rings for an hour until you get so frustrated that you throw the game into a ring of its own. And Beast Wars, which turns the masterful Transformers franchise into a... fighter. Blocky, foggy, strategically incomprehensible, it's a good thing this was a rental only, so unsuspecting kids didn't have to suffer the pain of unwrapping this horrible piece of crap for Christmas. And Daikatana, John Romero's long-winded, nonsensical, brainless sidekick babysitting adventure where you trudge through horribly textured environments and shoot things. Is it fun? I don't think so. But the majority of the Nintendo 64's garbage comes from the flood of sports games. Of the near 300 games on the system, about 75 of them are sports titles. That's 25% of the library, one of every four. And I'm not even including games like Wave Race, Blitz, or the Tony Hawk franchise. I don't have many, I don't care to acquire any more, and of the ones I do have, it's more fun to destroy them than to play them. By the late 90s, marketing for video games was pretty good, and the box art did a great job of tricking kids into thinking a game would be fun. But a few boxes were average at best. Robotron 64, for example, just looks faded, and depicts a bald doctor and blocky robots. Not exactly eye candy to consumers. This one isn't exactly bad, just misleading. What's this game about? It looks like Kate Winslet crying. Biofreaks just disturbs me, mostly because of the drool and the object jutting from his blood-encrusted nipple hole. With so few games in the library, there are few truly rare titles. Some of the rarest were blockbuster exclusives like Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, which is a slightly different game than the retail release Clay Fighter 63 and a third, and Transformers Beast Wars Transmetals. Other games like Bomberman 64, The Second Attack, and Snowboard Kids 2 suffered poor reviews and equally poor sales. And some, like Harvest Moon 64, are rare because of their niche genre, and nervous publishers didn't want to overproduce them. Every system has its share of peculiarities, and the Nintendo 64 shines in this department. From the controller with its bizarre three-pronged shape, innovative analog stick, Z-trigger, and memory card slash rumble pack port, to its rainbow of colorful cartridges and accessories. The system is unique. I guess 3D gaming was trying to find its footing, but why did so many platformers need a world hub, and levels that could only be unlocked by collecting things? Banjo-Kazooie, Gex, Donkey Kong, Rocket, Glover, 
it seems like every game in the platform genre is a clone of Super Mario 64. And speaking of 64, did every game have to end with 64? Asteroid 64, Bomberman 64, Doom 64, Excitebike 64, Gex 64, Kirby 64, Mega Man 64, Micro Machine 64, Turbo, Quest 64, Super Mario 64, Wipeout 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64. Do you know how many games there are with 64 in the title? You guessed it, 44. But what really drives me up a wall is that there are no end labels. Come on Nintendo, how am I supposed to find Mickey Speedway? You got it right with the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo. What were you thinking? The Nintendo 64 existed in that transitional period where developers struggled to make the switch from sprites to polygons and 2D to 3D. The ideas, though probably overambitious, were solid, but the technology wasn't quite there. Let's face it, it was an awkward adolescence. While many consider the Nintendo 64 as Nintendo's fall from dominance, I prefer to remember it as a shift in the gaming industry. It revolutionized how 3D games would be experienced, ushered in the era of the first-person shooter, established the importance of multiplayer modes, standardized analog controls, providing a level of precision in movement and aim that are mainstays today. And it gave the world many timeless classics. Sadly, it was also the last cartridge-based home console. If you have memories of playing the Nintendo 64, cherish them. If not, track down a system and make some. Thanks for watching.